Next tonight, uh, the Bibi Stockholm barge in Dorset was due to welcome the first of its 550 migrants tomorrow. That's no longer happening as it's hit with setback after setback. This time, reports of serious fire safety concerns mean another delay with one whistleblower describing the barge as a floating grandfell. Mm. Housing migrants in hotels is currently costing the government more than £6 million a day. The boat is one of three major alternative sites that the government hopes will slash that bill. The problem is only one of them has so far made it over the line, and even that's been hit with accusations of rampant disease. Now, we can get more on uh, this with the Times uh, Home Affairs editor, uh, Matt Dathan, who highlighted the, the latest uh, fire safety concerns uh, today uh, in his paper. Welcome. Um, these are serious accusations, if true. Yeah, that's right. Dorset Wind Wiltshire Fire and Rescue Service um, conducted a series of uh, fire safety checks last week, and, and they, their concerns were about when the barge becomes or reaches uh, full capacity, 506 migrants um, in maximum will be uh, housed on the Bibby Stockholm in the port of Portland, and the barge was only uh, built for 222. Um, now, the Home Office uh, insists that um, it can still move a small number on, onto the barge um, uh, without uh, sort of reaching those concerns. But um, this evening, about um, 6 p.m., we, we, we got wind of the fact that the Home Office, uh, after holding last-minute meetings about moving the first 25 on tomorrow, uh, have made a decision at the last minute to, to halt that by at least 24 hours because um, the fire rescue service is still not satisfied with the evacuation um, plans in place. But they, they clearly are committed to this, this, this plan uh, and this project. So now it's a case of when rather than if, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. And the Home Office says uh, possibly Wednesday, but um, I, I can't see it happening. Um, I'd be surprised if it happened this week, this week really. Uh, I think um, that the risk being taken, uh, not just for the safety of those on board, but for the whole Home Office project of trying to move migrants out of hotels into mass accommodation sites, if something was to go wrong and they acted against mm. uh, or at least before the fire service had uh, signed off uh, and, and satisfied with the issues relating to the fire safety procedures i think it'd be a major risk for the home office and uh, but the problem is the home office have already sent out uh, notice of uh, intent to transfer some of those migrants from hotels into the barge and they were due to be picked up tomorrow morning uh, so the barge plans are, are quite chaotic this week and uh, um, the, the, they're holding out hope they get migrants on on, the, on board on Wednesday, uh, but uh, more realistically, it'll be later this month, later in August. And, and what about the other two sites? That the government isn't having much uh, luck uh, on those either, and that's even without talking about the the, the, the doomed Rwanda flights. This, this whole project seems just messy and a bit rubbish. Yeah, that's right. As the Home Office found last summer when it was trying to open up RAF Linton in uh, in North Yorkshire. Um, th these plans are much more difficult than simply repurposing old military sites. The RAF base in, in Scampton, uh, the former home of the Dunbusters, uh, that has now been delayed until October. Uh, and Weathersfield, where we do have uh, 46 migrants uh, having transferred early in, in July, uh, there's been a small uh, number of migrants who have been identified with uh, tuberculosis uh, and uh, scabies. Um, and despite that, the Home Office was still planning to move um, people in uh, tomorrow. Um, we have still to hear whether they're going to press ahead with those plans. Um, but uh, yes, e even the one of the three that does house migrants is, is suffering uh, problems with diseases. How does this happen, Matt? How does how does I mean, setting aside your thoughts on the actual one's thoughts on the actual politics of the project in the first place, how does something like this get handled so incompetently that a, a, that a, a government cannot manage a project like this properly, can't um, move people into accommodation that's not a, a fire trap, can't move people uh, into accommodation while they're, they're full of uh, TB and, and scabies? How does it just mishandle, mismanage? Uh, a, pr a project like this in this way? Well, I think uh, the Home Office, um, you know, they're, they're dealing with uh, individuals who have, um, I mean, the, 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 the issue with the Weathersfield, they're dealing with migrants who have just arrived in the UK and it's, they've offered assurances to public health authorities in Essex and local MPs that those migrants would be screened, uh, fully screened in Dover before being moved uh, to Weathersfield. 
and, and granted, it was just a small number who, who did have scabies, and, and they're insisting that the, the tuberculosis is latent, so it's not contagious. Um, but so, but on the barge, uh, it does seem like they're just they're rushing the plans in order um, to win the political argument, I, I guess, and to get the momentum of getting migrants onto these cheaper accommodation sites um, before they've gone through the proper procedures of uh, making sure that the site is safe. They took us um, and a, a few of us journalists on, onto the barge um, week before last, and and the but they, they contracted a management firm um, that managed the Ukrainian refugees who were. Uh, housed on, on cruise ships in Scotland. And um, it seems there's a slight disconnect between the Home Office and that management company, because uh, when I asked, for example, what are the procedures for fire drills, the management company simply said, oh, we, we won't be doing fire drills because we don't want to upset the migrants on board. Um, that is clearly not an acceptable, I guess, response when uh, you have um, asylum seekers uh, who are, will, some of them will be vulnerable, yeah. uh, living in very cramped conditions. Okay, thanks for that, Matt. Matt Dathan, uh, Times at Home Affairs editor. Thanks so much for that. Uh, Jack and Claire are back with me. Uh, initial thoughts? Uh, you said it. It's a shambles, isn't it? And, and, I mean, this is a government that is floundering around with a basic problem that it's got, which is that it's the speed at which it's processing these cases has completely collapsed and we know that and that is why the number of people they're suddenly having to house or not suddenly now it's been going on for some time is through the roof and so they're scrambling around trying to find a solution that doesn't look as bad and isn't cost as much as putting them in hotels but the fundamental problem is caused because the Home Office has just lost the ability to process these cases in an acceptable case and so the number of them are just going up and up and up and we're seeing these increasingly inhumane options chosen that just don't work. And so that we have this problem that's only getting worse. Well, it's yet another another example of private-public partnership that's just failed, failed, oh, failed. Really? You know, I think the management company, to, to turn around and tell the Times journalist, oh, we don't want to, like, trigger a refugee for doing a fire check or fire safety, that's inhumane in itself. And just sounds like it nonsense. Frankly. Really, it, I, I agree, Phil, I absolutely agree. And it's these private companies, I think, have to be taken to task. And the Home Office, it's an absolute... I want to say something, but I won't. It's just, it's just horrible, it really is, and it's inhumane. And I don't know what on earth these people are... If they knew where they were coming, do you think they would still come? If you knew... Yes, if, yes. If, yes because, do you really? Yes, uh, but, uh, but only because... You, think about it. Think about it. And, I've and tried. people keep, keep making this, this, this point that if you, you get on a boat knowing that the chances are that you will die as you go across the boat, yeah. as you go across the sea, that generally means that what you are fleeing, what you are running from is even worse than the... If you have a 50-50 a 50 50 chance of yeah. not dying on yeah, your yeah. way away from yeah. it, then what you're running from must be horrendous. I get that, but then you've got the mail front page saying they're, they've shut down these legal firms because they're actually coaching mm. refugees on what to say and what to do in, in order to get status. We've known of Albanian criminals to try and... You know, it's, basically a form of human trafficking to get people over. Mm. They, they pay up to thousands of pounds. They've got mobile phones. They, 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 it's a huge operation. So yeah, where, clearly, where's clearly it's the... A, it's, a, it's a complicated uh, issue. But I'm, I'm, I hadn't thought about the, the, the point that, that, that you raised, Jack, that you trace this backwards and you go, oh, Home Office, Home Office. You're not, the, the, you're not processing people quickly enough and then... So we've got, to, we've got to do something. But the Home Office has been dysfunctional almost as long as I've been alive. They, they, I, I can... Which was the... Yeah. the Under any government. Which was the Home yeah. Secretary? I think it was a Labour Home Secretary who said it was not fit for purpose. He was the first one that... that... It was John Reid, wasn't John it? John Reid, I mean, that was in best part of 20 years yes, ago there. That and, long ago. And here we are. And, and, and that's absolutely right. But this, this, this speed of processing problem is a, is, a, is a relatively new one for them, it, or it's certainly got a lot, lot worse. Is that because there's more years. refugees or less people... Dealing with it. It's, it's got to be all of that, hasn't it? There's certainly more uh, over, since the pandemic ended, but equally the speed at which they deal with each case has got much, much, much worse. And so these backlogs have just built up and got completely out of control and they don't seem to be able to get a grip on it. There's Everyone no accepts on it. they've got that problem, but they don't seem to know how to deal with it. And so this, as I say, this increasing problem of, well, where are we going to put these people is just baffling the finest minds in government at the